So hi, my name is Leif. I know most of you online or have uh, met you uh, today. So this is a little hobby project that I've been working on the last uh, several months, and it's uh, come to fruition in a, a really quite remarkable way, so I'd just like to talk a bit about it. Uh, so yeah, it's a Wi-Fi modem for the Commodore 64, and well, 128, and 30, and so on. So it uh, combines a few of uh, my different hobby interests all into one thing. So that's what it looks like. There's a close-up of it. That's one of the prototype boards, but here's the actual unit. So it's got a, it's a user port device for the 64. It goes into the port that you would traditionally plug your modem into, so user port. Uh, it's got a little buffer chip, and this uh, part is called the MicroView. It's actually an Arduino Uno, the screen built in. So it's an Arduino, so it's programmable. It's very good at interfacing to the outside world. And then the uh, core of the system is called the RNXV, or the Wi-Fi, from a company called Rogue Networks. So the, uh, well, I've got a bit of uh, description of what the different uh, functions are. And there's a few you know, reset buttons, so you can reset the various components. OK, so this, this is a bit of an eye chart. I like to think that this is me trying to one-up myself in how many acronyms can I fit on one PowerPoint slide. So there's a lot. So it's a user port device, like I said. It has two different firmwares you can use. There's uh, so it'll emulate a Hayes modem, or you can just use a uh, built-in menu. Uh, all the RS-232 lines are brought through to the 64. This will allow you to uh, use it to run a PBS, for example, or other types of uh, signaling. It does 802.11 Wi-Fi. And uh, the TCP stack, TCP IP stack resides on here uh, in 64, and that gives you all the usual alphabet soup of internet and technologies for uh, connecting to the, to the outside world. So, and it is Wi-Fi, so it supports web and WPA. There's a common hack called the UP9600. Usually the Commodore user port can only do 2400 baht, but with this hack and a special driver, you can do 9600. So that's supported. A little screen that's uh, programmable, uh, a little display, and like I said, the reset buttons. So the display is used for uh, status messages and uh, what the state of the modem is. But the MicroView library uh, supports a lot of really neat things, like you could use sprites on it. Sprites and lines and graphics. So, you know, some people have written games that run on this. So, there's some interesting possibilities for connecting that to the Commodore to do sky's the limit. So, here's the various bits. So, again, the 64 talks to the MicroView or R232. There's a second serial link that goes through to the Wi Fi, and then from there it goes out to your wireless access point. So the 64, you just run any standard terminal program that you've uh, been using all these years, Nova term, you know, CCGMS, strike term. Uh, again, on the mic, on the Arduino is where we're doing the modem emulation. And then Wi-Fi is connecting to your access point. And I've got a little debug jumper so that if you want to connect directly to the Wi-Fi, that's an option too. But the, the command set is quite cryptic, so that's why we have the conversion on board to make it look like a mode. So there's a couple of a couple of different ways you can use it. So the default, the as I showed in that way. Sorry. You're gonna get. Uh, you can also use it standalone. So originally, I had a couple, I had two different boards in mind. One board would just be for connecting to the Commodore, and one would be for connecting the my, the Arduino to the outside world. And I decided to just combine. Them. So it's one board that does WP. So you don't have, to, so you can run it without connecting it to the Commodore at all. There's a, a place, there's a spot for an external power port, and uh, so you can set up like a little weather station. I had a. I wrote a little app for it that would receive packets and display them on the screen, so I was sending secret messages to my daughter from one side of the house to the other, and she loved that. So, yeah. And then, because it is an Arduino, it's very good at interfacing to the outside world, and all of those I.O. pins are broken up along the top. So, uh, the firmware, uh, so I started on a very simple uh, 
uh, Arduino sketch just showing the, uh, the basics. And then Alex Berger, who is here, took it, ran with it, and has added so many features and done tons of bug testing. So thank you very much for that. That was just amazing. It's really brought the product to, uh, to life. So there's two options for the firmware. Uh, first is, the, uh, is a menu mode. This is just a very simple menu-driven interface that I'll show in a, in a second that uh, lets you uh, dial out to VBS or to a Linux box. You can receive calls, so you can you know, talk back and forth over Wi-Fi. And all the configuration is just done through prompts. The second option is Hayes firmware. So this is a, a much more sophisticated emulation of a Hayes modem device. So some of you might remember back in the day doing ATDT dial out, so it supports that. You can receive incoming calls, and again, it emulates a modem. It actually prints the word ring, and it sets all the different uh, signals. So as far as the Commodore is concerned, it's talking to a modem on a phone line. So again, you can run the old BBS software from back in the day with unmodified with this. As there are a few other commands that uh, there was never a Haze equivalent, so we've uh, used the Haze extended set, where you can set things like your Wi-Fi, SSID, Etc. So both of these uh, versions of the firmware will uh, give you a couple of features. So the auto start, you can tell it which uh, host to connect to as soon as the power is turned on. So a uh, um, common example there would be Commodore server. So this is the cloud service uh, device. The cloud service here is 64, so you can have a virtual device in the cloud. So having this automatically connect to it is uh, pretty handy. Uh, this phone book, the configuration all is all stored in EEPROM on the Arduino. And something clever that uh, Alex put in is uh, automatic bot detection. So at startup, you have, a, you have three seconds to just hit a key, and it, you know, the U key works best. And it will automatically figure out what bot rate you're at. <laughs> and uh, in both, you can it will automatically detect whether you're in ASCII mode or Petsky mode. That was a big information dump. Any questions so far? <coughs> All right. So prototype board. So this uh, this is the first circuit board I ever designed. This was a learning exercise for me to learn how to design circuit boards, and I showed it to a few people, and everyone said, "Okay, where do I get one?" <laughs> All right, give me give me a couple months, and I'll you know, work through it. So I made I made some prototypes, got you know Alex and Frank and a whole bunch of folks to test it out on their own took their feedback and turned it into, I don't have a picture because I'm holding the actual boards here. How many iterations did you go through? Uh, this is the fourth iteration. Yeah, so the first one, the first one was full of mistakes. I didn't connect any of the grounds together, so. Uh, the second one was uh, just, you know, correcting the mistakes I made from the first one. The third one, I added the UP9600 and so on, it was pretty much final. The only addition for the final one is a little jumper to uh, disconnect from the Commodore's user port power. So if you wanted to power externally while it's still connected, it was the jumper. And the colors changed too. The first one was purple, and then it was green, and these are black. So, a small team of beta testers is working with the prototypes. Uh, firmware is in beta state, but uh, I'll show you it's quite usable. All the code and documentation is up on GitHub, so it's all published under the MIT license. The MIT license is basically do what you want, but give us credit, please. And I am selling them. I have a bunch here today. The half of them are gone already, but the, uh, I'm selling them for 150. And there's a little USB programmer that you need for upgrading the firmware. That's another 20. Highly recommended. And I've set up a user and support forum. So you go to jammingsignal.com and click forums and you'll see there's one for Commodore Wi-Fi mode. Okay, enough PowerPoint. Let's actually hook up a Commodore 64, but that's what we do here. Okay, so this is inside Nova Term. So this is the menu firmware that I'm running here. So I have the three choices, Telnet out, wait for a coming connection, or configuration. Configuration is pretty interesting, so we'll go here. So I can display the current config. 
and then it shows the MAC address, the IP address that's been served up by DHCP, the SSID, and the, the firmware version. I still chuckle a little bit every, every time I see a 64 with an IP address. I just love that. And takes you back to the menu. Uh, so to change the SSID, I won't do this live, but you just hit the uh, hit that, and it asks do you want like a double VA, it'll prompt for your password, and then the SSID name. Yeah, auto start, so we just have the one option right now, which is Commodore Server. I don't actually have an account. It's BBS. I just call it all the time. But <laughs> 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 I 